This topic is on hypothyroidism and follows the NICE guidelines of 2020. Hypothyroidism is a common condition of the thyroid hormone. There is a deficiency in T3 and T4 hormones, and these hormones are essential for normal growth, development, and metabolism. Hypothyroidism can generally be split into two main categories, primary and secondary hypothyroidism. Primary hypothyroidism occurs in about 95% of cases where there is a deficiency in thyroid hormones. This is usually due to the thyroid gland being unable to produce thyroid hormones. Secondary or central hypothyroidism is the result of insufficient thyroid stimulation due to a pituitary or hypothalamic problem. The main cause of hypothyroidism worldwide is iodine deficiency. In iodine-sufficient areas, for example in developed countries like the UK, hypothyroidism is most often caused by autoimmunity. This may be associated with a goiter, for example Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or occur without a goiter, for example atrophic thyroiditis. Other causes include post-ablative surgery and drugs like carbamazole, iodine, amiodarone, and lithium. Causes of secondary or central hypothyroidism are mainly due to pituitary or hypothalamic dysfunction such as tumours, head trauma, surgery, and Sheehan syndrome. The complications of hypothyroidism include mainly the cardiovascular complications such as dyslipidemia, metabolic syndrome, stroke, and heart failure. Others include infertility and subfertility, pregnancy-related complications, and the feared myxedema coma. Myxedema coma is a rare medical emergency due to untreated severe hypothyroidism that may present with lethargy, bradycardia, hypothermia, seizures, or coma. Suspect a diagnosis of hypothyroidism if there's more than one of these clinical features. This include fatigue and lethargy, co-intolerance, weight gain, constipation, non-specific weaknesses, arthralgia and myalgia, menstrual irregularities, infertility or subfertility, depression, impact concentration and memory, dry skin and hair loss, thyroid pain, any changes to appearances such as coarse dry hair and skin or hair loss, peripheral edema, hoarseness or deepening of the voice, goiter, bradycardia, delayed relaxation of deep tendon reflexes, paresthesia or peripheral neuropathy, or a diagnosis of other autoimmune diseases. Do note that these clinical features are usually absent in subclinical hypothyroidism. For secondary hypothyroidism, there may be features that we mentioned earlier, together with clinical features of possible hypothalamic or pituitary diseases. These include recurring headaches, diplopia, or visual field defects. In addition, abnormal pituitary hormone production may cause skin pigmentation, atrophic breasts, galactoria, amenorrhea, erectile dysfunction, loss of body hair, Cushing syndrome, or acromegaly. To diagnose hypothyroidism, it's important for you to take a good history and examination. Ask about relevant symptoms, pregnancy, recent acute diseases, drugs, family history, any past medical history of autoimmune diseases, previous surgery or radiotherapy of the neck or head, and possible secondary causes, for example, head trauma or brain cancer. For the examination, look out for any signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, any goiters or nodules in the thyroid, any signs of any other autoimmune diseases such as Addison's disease, alopecia, pernicious anemia, celiac disease, type 1 diabetes, and vertiligo. The main lab test to perform is the thyroid function test. Also consider performing full blood count, vitamin B12, HbA1c, celiac serology, lipids, and thyroid peroxidase antibodies. 
arrange an ultrasound of the neck if patients have got palpable goiter or any thyroid nodules. It's important for you to know how to interpret the thyroid function tests. For overt primary hypothyroidism, usually patients will have high TSH with low T4s. For patients with secondary hypothyroidism, TSH levels are low or normal, but T4 is below the normal reference range. For subclinical hypothyroidism, usually TSH is high with a normal T4. And for postpartum thyroiditis, suspected when usually there is a high TSH within a year of giving birth. Do note that there are also conditions that may affect TFTs as well. Patients who are non-adherent to T4 therapy may have additional doses in the days before blood monitoring. This may lead to a raised TSH and a normal or raised T4. For sick new thyroid syndrome, this includes a wide range of acute or chronic non-thyroidal conditions such as starvation and trauma, and these can lead to abnormal TFTs which are usually not due to the true dysfunction of the hypothalamic, pituitary and thyroid axis. The TSH can be normal or low and then becomes high during recovery from acute illnesses. The T force can be normal, low or high. Adrenal insufficiency may be associated with elevated TSH levels that reverses with glucocorticoid replacement. Obesity can also affect the axis and that can lead to a raised TSH levels. This may falsely suggest subclinical hypothyroidism. Drugs such as lithium and amiodarone can affect the TFTs as well. It's important for you to know when to refer to specialist care accordingly. Any patients with suspected serious complications such as myxedema coma requires urgent admission to the ED immediately. If there are any suspicion of thyroid, head or neck cancers, refer under the two-week week protocol. Urgent endocrine referral is also required if you suspect secondary hypothyroidism. A routine referral or discussion with the endocrine team is required if patient is female and is planning a pregnancy, if you suspect a subacute thyroiditis, if patient has got any goiter, nodules or structural changes in the thyroid gland, if you think the patient has suspected associated endocrine diseases like Addison's, if there's an atypical or difficult to interpret TFTs, if there's suspected underlying cause of hypothyroidism such as drug treatment, or there's inadequate treatment of hypothyroidism at primary care level. According to NICE guidelines, management of hypothyroidism is based on whether the patient has overt primary hypothyroidism, subclinical hypothyroidism, patients who are pregnant or planning to get pregnant, and postpartum. For this video, I'll only just focus on the treatment of overt primary hypothyroidism. Once we have excluded all the cases that requires referrals, treat the patient with levothyroxine. Check TSH levels every three months after starting T4 therapy and adjust dosage according to symptoms and TFT levels. Once TSH is stable for two readings, you can check the TSH annually. In summary, it's important for you to be able to differentiate the different kinds of hypothyroidism, know the causes of hypothyroidism, mainly iodine deficiency in developing countries and autoimmune thyroiditis in developed countries. You also need to know the complications of hypothyroidism, knowing when to refer, and the appropriate treatment and monitoring of this condition. Do let me know what conditions you would like me to cover in the future. Subscribe for more.